Hello and welcome to Why We Are Christians. My name is Kent Philpott, and this is going to be the second program. We're talking with Harold Sweet. He's down at a church building in Compton, California, and he's got the shirt on. What does that say again, Harold? Um, the acronym for cross. Christ redeemed our sinful souls. Okay. Here's Harold's book. Uh, how did, how did you get a hold of us, Harold? How did you find um, out about us? Uh, well, um, Mr. Kenneth Hartman, a good friend oh, of Ken yours. Ken Hartman, yeah, Ken who wrote Kenneth Mother Hartman. California. Yeah. Um, he's been out, he, he's he, been out for years. Oh, that's right. He was down in Lancaster. Right. I, and, um, I did 16 years on the yard with Kenneth Hartman. He was my, what a fine was, guy. Yeah. I, I, I've, um, I've, uh, I've spoken with him on a number of occasions, uh, and I loved his book, um, Mother California. Yeah, and yeah. Basically, how he got raised in the prison yeah. system. Right. And I know what a great guy community. Kenneth Hartman is. So, uh, so that's interesting. In that's that's the connection. Yeah, and, and yeah. So we was in the we was in the same um, um, prison unit complex together. He was like three or four cells down from me. Okay. And he and he was familiar with what I was trying to do when initially um, the Spirit of God began to reveal to me these particular biblical acronyms. And okay. I was trying um, to get it published, and I was not having any success initially. And so okay. I was in the chapel one. I was in the chapel one day, and Kenneth he was the clerk inside the chapel, and that's when he uh, brought up your name and said okay. that hey, I got a, I got a friend. Um, who might be willing to help you because I know what you're trying to do and I respect what you're trying to do. And so that's when he gave me um, your name and address, and that's how I came to um, to know you. Wow, I, I had forgotten that, Harold. That's very interesting. And uh, I know Kenneth is out doing a lot of uh, good work on the behalf of uh, uh, inmates and so on. He's still doing it. Good for him. So... <clears throat> So where we left you, uh, you were back in prison, and you were going in and out, in and out. Tell us a little bit more about that, Harold. Well, initially, even though the word of God has always been within my heart, I still was, as the word says, as a rebellious ox, unaccustomed to the yoke. So I still didn't want to mind nobody. I still didn't want to mind Christ. I knew Christ. But I still didn't want to obey him wholeheartedly. And so I, I was not willing um, nor ready to give up my drug addiction. So even though I would initially come to prison through the time, there was no healing work. Um, there was no restorational work that I was willing to do each time. I just came in, did my time. As soon as, it, as, soon as I got out, I went straight back to the drugs, straight back to the company, straight back to the streets, straight to the drug dealer straight to the cocaine pipe. That's what I did repeatedly. As yeah. soon as I get the, uh, you know, they give you $200 gate money from prison. That's all they get is $200 gate money. But that $200 gate money will be spent before I even get back to Compton. As soon as I get down to downtown LA, I go do drugs. Okay. And so from that point on, criminal life continues. Yeah. You know, until I get caught again. Right. Uh, I had a, I got a letter from uh, one of the guys that I write to used to be at San Quentin. He's down at Donovan now. And uh, we've been writing for years. Great guy. Started being on our team about 2010. Um, 2010, 2011, got transferred out a couple places. And uh, he, in a letter, I just read it this morning. He said, um, a day of boredom in prison is a good day. <laughs> <laughs> and the next sentence was, he said, because anything can happen. You want, basically, you want a boring day in yeah. prison. That's the best day. So yeah. you talk about that a little bit, Harold. Well, you know, um, I, I initially started on level one. Like CMC was like a level one, the lower level. Right. Um, 
but once you started getting um, um, dictionary write-ups, you start getting points added to your status, which now you go to level two. So the higher the level, the more violent the prison yard. You know, to eventually, I went from being at CMC level one to Pelican Bay. You were so, at Pelican Bay? Yes, sir. I, I paroled for Pelican Bay. I was in Pelican Bay Shoe. So, so was that level three or four? That's level four. That's maximum security. Wow. So you and, were at Pelican was, Bay. I did not know that, Harold. Yeah, I was in Pelican Bay. And um, like I say, it can go from one to 100 real quick. You can get in trouble real quick. Next thing you know it, you're not on level one, you're on level four. Once you get to a level three or four, it's harder for your points to come back down to go back to level one because so much violence and so much things take place. It's like you say about, you pray that it'd be a boring day. There's not too many boring days on level four. There's always something going on, whether it be racial, whether it be between the gangs, whether it be between individuals, there's always something going on in prison. Right. So, like I said, even though I was on the level fours, even I was in Corcoran Shoe, even though I was at Pelican Bay twice. I mean, I was just very fortunate that I never really got into any physical altercations, whereas that I was hurt or vice versa. You know, God watched over me. All these years, God watched over me. Not because I was big and bad or I'm a good fighter. Just God watched over me. Yeah. Where, did you go and talk to any of the chaplains or any of the, uh, any of the chapels? Or did you get involved in those? Um, some. Um, some I did, some I didn't because they had a particular system that they went by. And unless you are a part of their system, then they don't fully embrace you as you would like. So okay. I would be forced to go and have church or a group of inmates out on the prison yard in a circle. And we have church out there on, on the yard, on the level four yard at that. Something really unheard of. Yes. Said, no, no, you don't do that on the level four because there's always something going on. Yet, just to show you how God was at work, I used to have a circle of inmates out on level four yard having Bible study. How so, did you overcome, Harold? How, how did you overcome the feeling um, that uh, there was just no place for you? Or uh, you get over the feeling that uh, you were useless, no good, uh, you can't overcome this. Uh, I've, I've known some people who um, just stayed in prison. They, they didn't want to get back on the street. That was a, you probably met those guys too. And, and they, the block, yeah. yeah, they, they, they were comfortable in prison. I had, I've had guys tell me that played on my team. Uh, it won't be too long. I'll be back. I'll be back on your team. And a couple times it did. They did. <laughs> yeah. So how did you well, get over that? How did you get through those, those emotions? Well, I knew that as long as I continue to do drugs, I wasn't going to stay free. I knew that eventually I would be back in prison. And these times I would come back to prison, each time would be longer and longer. And so now I had time to really sit and think and contemplate about my wayward actions. And I got to a point where the Spirit of God just said, hey, enough is enough. And so I began to... Um, back in 2001 and two, um, I began to decide to make a change this time. I decided to give up the drugs. I decided to um, get me some vocational skills in prison. Um, I decided to um, take drug classes, um, anger management, criminal thinking classes. Um, I was a drug facilitator at CRC. Um, you know, these are the things that I, I did this time around that I didn't do before. Also, um, I buckled down on preaching the word um, as it illustrates in my book and introduction where, you know, um, we 
me and uh, a brother of mine, Anthony Webb, um, was instrumental in baptizing and bringing many inmates to, to Christ right there in Lancaster Yard for those 16 years. That's what we did day in and day out. He just called me two weeks ago. So, but that's yeah. basically how I overcame this time. I just, you know, turned back to Christ. I did those things that I know I should have been doing a long time ago. And God bless me. You know, so I was able to put faith and works together and begin to 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 make some progress. I'm okay, still making great progress. Um, so, which I, I'm holding your your first book up. Uh, it says a small Bible, B I B L E, or Biblical Acronyms, Volume One. Harold L. Sweet says Harold L. What's the L mean? <laughs> For Lee. Lee. Okay, That's Harold. Lee. Harold Lee Sweet, and. Uh, the book is available at uh, Amazon.com. Tell, tell us a little bit about how you got into to writing, to writing these books. It's very interesting, by the way. It's a very interesting uh, book, and there's a you can learn a lot from it. You can learn a lot from this book, and uh, we published it. Our my wife and I, Katie and I, uh, Earth and Vessel Media, and we published the book um, a couple three years ago now. Uh, tell us a little bit how you got interested in this, Harold. Well, I was in Lancaster prison, like I said, for 16 years on the same prison yard. And I was working in the kitchen. And just one day, the acronym for cross on my shirt, Christ Redeemed, a sinful soul, just come to my mind. It's out of nowhere. It's out of the blue. And it hit me like, whoa, you know, Christ Redeemed, a sinful soul. All them years that, you know, we preach and teach about the cross, it never hit me that that's what that meant. So that was initially what got me started, interested in it. But also, um, you know, when you ask a Christian about an acronym, most of them will say Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth. And when I first heard that, that floored me. I'm like, basic, whoa. Okay. I Basic instruction before leaving Earth. Yeah. Um, ah. So when I found out what that means, it was so profound. I mean, it stirred something in me. And then the next acronym somebody shared with me was the gospel. God's only son preach everlasting life. <laughs> when I heard that, I mean, it was so profound that I ran back to my prison cell and began to immediately write a poem about the Bible and the gospel. And both poems are in the beginning of, of volume one right there. Um, we have, we've had fun, fun with it, I gotta tell you. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's stuff in here that I've, I've never thought of or, or uh, seen ever before. Here's the word door, you know, the door of the sheep. Uh, daysmen of our light of our redemption right now amen, Harold? amen. Door. and then you talk about it now victors is valiant in conquering through our redeeming savior yeah, okay. okay let me do one more here's church here's church christ holy unified righteously constructed habitation well well actually actually can't See, you might think I'm just saying this. These acronyms is not of my creating. These acronyms just come to me from the Holy Spirit. Okay. And so these, these acronyms are so meaningful, they rightly define the actual meaning of the word. Okay. And that's what makes them so powerful. So if you're a pastor, you're a teacher, you're an evangelist, and you're looking for a new creative, witty way to administer the gospel, these acronyms will be the way to go. Because okay, there's something good. new. Sounds, sounds good, Harold. Um, now, you, you're right now, we're gonna talk about your next book, okay, in a minute. You got a new one going, don't you? Yes, sir. Okay, now, you got, you got out of um, California State Prison, Lancaster, uh, but about six months ago? 
Um, yeah, well, I, I left uh, from Lancaster and I went to CRC. I transferred to CRC and I paroled from CRC this past February the 4th. So okay. I've been out about four months now, uh, close okay. about five okay. months, almost. Okay. And so now you're you're in downtown Los Angeles. Yes, sir. I'm at the I'm at the Wine Garden on okay. Six and San Pedro, downtown Los Angeles. They don't call it a halfway house. What do they call that? It's a rehab. Well, it's 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 it's, it's somewhat of a rehab. Um, also, um, housing for, for homeless people, um, um, sober living type. Uh, place um, is right smack downtown um, across the street from the all night mission, the homeless okay. and stuff down there. So that's the setting right, right, right there. I was there, I was there once before back in 2001, but like I said before, I was not trying to stay clean off the drugs. It's ironic that the Lord sent me right back to the same place, you know, same as I was in 2001, but this time I got it right. Okay. This time I'm staying clean. You, did you say you got life? No, I said I said this time I got it right. Okay, okay. Sorry, I <laughs> I didn't hear that. I had to clear that up, Errol. Uh, don't worry. Uh, we'll we'll delete that part. We'll we'll go a little bit more than twenty nine minutes to to delete that. Right. Katie will delete that. But um, so you're going to be uh, at that place in L. A for how much longer? Well, um, I'm working now. I'm working out in Santa Fe Springs, California at a warehouse. And, That's um, right, I, you told me here last week you just got a job, yeah. Right, and um, I'm gonna be selling these t-shirts right here um, sometime in a more couple, couple more weeks. They're gonna start being made next week. So basically, um, the program is you work in the program and you save your money. And that way, when your time expires in the program, you have somewhere to to go. It's your responsibility to find your own house, apartment, or place based upon the money that you make and save within the program. So okay. um, I can't tell you how long I'll be there, but I think that I might be there a while right now because God has given me favor there. So I'm going to be there a while. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But, you know. Harold, I want to talk to you something about current events right now. Okay, George Floyd. Uh, yesterday, we were in a march up in Novato. I was a speaker there. Uh, it was a Christian march in Marin County. And it was about social justice. Uh, and I wrote a paper saying, I am a racist and so are you. I was raised in a black and white neighborhood in Portland, Oregon moved to LA and I was involved in the gang wars. You wouldn't think that I was, but I was. Uh, we fought the, uh, the blacks at Belmont, uh, the Mexicans at Lincoln and San Fernando Valley High. And we fought the Buddha heads in Hollywood and the other gangs around. Uh, and, uh, and I lived that life. And I, when I went into the military, I really had not very much racial thing but I acquired it and what I preached on was do unto others. Uh, I have to admit my racist nature. I have, I, I can be racist. I, I've had it, people injected against me. I had it happen this morning. Uh, as a matter of fact, right before church and uh, it's in all of us. And how, how do you view racism? How do you view the whole thing with George Floyd and what's going on, Harold? Well, um, to tell you the truth, initially I was not even aware that this took place in that in the program, I don't have no television, no TV, I'm in a room, you know what I'm saying? But initially, you know, I see it as the system is what it is. That doesn't mean that all police officers are, are racist or against blacks. Uh, because um, I have a, a good um, police officer friend that took care of me for many years when I was out on the streets, you know, somebody that looked out after me and took me as it were into his family. And so, you know, I don't look at all police officers as racist, but you do have some racist police out there who 
do things like that to Mr. Floyd and, and others. And the system, um, the police organizations have a long history of it. I believe it comes from uh, miseducation, um, how they was raised, um, the media, and other other negative factors, you know, Sammy, that, that breeds this. It's a generational thing. I believe it's a generational thing. But I also believe that it is something that can be changed, something um, that can be done away with. But it's going to take work. It's going to take time. But above all, it's going to take the power of God in Christ to do it. Without that, it's, it's not going to happen. I agree, Harold. I think it's going to take several gener generations. My brother was the chief of police of Pasadena, had a great relationship with the black community there. His girlfriend was black, uh, and uh, he was very well honored in the black community in Pasadena. He ran the Rose Bowl and the Rose Parade for many years, a great guy. And uh, But racism is, is a... Is a uh, I think the thing can only be solved through uh, the idea and recognition that we are, Jesus called us to do other, unto others as uh, we would have done unto us. And this changes things for us. Um, and, now, Harold, tell me about, tell me about your new book. Um, the new book is uh, a small Bible of biblical acronyms, volume two. It's a continuation of the first wonderful volume we got there. Okay. However, in volume, volume two, I begin to get into the more deeper things of the word of God. In volume one, um, basically we do the basic words, faith, hope, grace, church, Jesus, cross. You know, we don't, we, I didn't want to give the, the, the reader too much too soon. I want to take them on a long journey. Because as I said before, I have an unlimited number of biblical acronyms. So I might be on volume 15 or volume 20. That's how much we got, okay? <laughs> and so what we're going to do or what I want to do, the plan is each volume to take them a journey throughout the entire Bible. So volume two, it just basically get into the more weightier things of the word, the more deeper things of the word of God. No, okay. but it's, 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 it's a real good book. I'm excited. I'm anxious you know, to um, to get it out. Um, and, and in volume one in the back, I have included the first acronym that's going to be in that second volume, the Logos. Okay. And what is it? The Logos. Logos, okay, word. Yes, L-O-G-O-S, no, just... the okay. Logos, that's Jesus Christ. That's right. In that's the beginning Jesus was Christ. the word. Right, the Logos. The logo. And you know what that stands. And you know what that stands for. Yes. The language. The language of God's omnipotent Son. Wow. <laughs> now, now, how, 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 how you go? I'm gonna make some up like that, Ken. How you gonna make some up like that? I can't make nothing up that long because the Bible says in now, the Harold, are you word, gonna are you gonna claim special revelation here? No, and that's no special revelation. It's we just gotta be a little Holy humble Spirit. here, Earl. I'm, I'm humble. I'm, hey, I'm just telling you, the Holy Spirit revealed these things to me, but you got to understand, remember, that I was raised in the Word. And when the Holy Spirit gave me the acronyms, I already have the knowledge of what the Bible taught. So I'm simply taking the acronym and using the knowledge in order to teach. Okay. That's all I'm doing. I, I, I think that's good. Good. I, I think I, I can see that because uh, uh, getting some hold of some of those, some of the central themes like uh, uh, like logos, like uh, uh, gospel, and on other words, uh, it helps you to have a little firmer understanding of what that concept's all about. Now let me let me let me say something real quick, Kent. Sure. Now the gospel. Remember I told you somebody shared the acronym for gospel, God's only son, preach everlasting life. I, and that and that was that was profound. But a month later, the spirit hit me with another acronym for gospel. Graciously offered, scripturally published, evangel letter. Wow. And the word and the word evangel means what? The good news. Yeah. 
So salvation is the gospel, the graciously offered, scripturally published evangel letter of Christ. I mean, how are you going to make up something like that? <laughs> That's the Holy yeah. Spirit, man. <laughs> Very good. All right, Harold. Well, we're looking forward to you get get seeing that book. You'll have to send it to us. I will. As as now I you get, get a, you got to work with Lee to get a Lee uh, uh, a word document to us. Yeah, yeah, I, I, most definitely. You know. <laughs> and uh, we want to be talking. I want to be talking to Lee here just in a little bit, and uh, uh, want to find out about him and and what a good friend he's been to you. Okay. And I know he's right out of Compton too, hadn't he, Harold? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been I've been knowing Lee since nights is when when he first came to this church. He was a young man. We were just talking about that. Seventy six. Okay. Since nineteen seventy six. And he's still here. And he's been okay, through some good. things too. Yeah. Okay. So he 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 a good friend, good brother. You serving bet. Christ. So how much, just to close out here, we just got about a minute, Harold. Um, so you're gonna be in that particular location now for about another five, six months? Yeah, some, something like that. Something Roughly. like that. Or, or longer. You, or longer. Then you're gonna have a, then you'll, but you won't be getting out of there until you really have a, a solid place to go. Right, right. So I save, so I work and save my money in order to me to move into my own place. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, good. Do you feel like you've beat the uh, the 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 desire to do drugs? Oh yeah. Well, I didn't beat it. Christ beat it for me. You know what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit, you know, sent me. Um, he did it because, like I say, I'm in the midst of um, Skid Row downtown, and drugs and smoke and alcohol and cocaine and and speed, all that type of stuff I smell and I walk past every single day. And yet I don't even have a desire to do it anymore. I got a pocket full of money and I don't have a desire to do those things anymore. Now, years before, oh, I would have been got high a long time ago. Right. I got it. Desire. Hill, but, but Christ gave me that desire. Hild, thank you for the conversation. I enjoy you having welcome. your fellowship. Glad to encourage you, and I hope a lot of people are going to see uh, Harold's book, and you're going to see it, everybody, uh, in the next frame, just after uh, the ending of this program. All right. Until the next um, edition of Why We Are Christians, I say so long and God bless. <laughs>